Hey, the Lord had almost shown me a vision, and I already seen the color of the snake, and I had to said no. But he wouldn't leave my office. And if you wouldn't leave my office, I had people sitting out there. I would have my secretaries come in there, and I'd bounce you. I just walk out of the office and keep walking. Hallelujah. And the God's secretaries come in and said, He's gone. Would you please leave? Because there's, uh, there, and I had, I had two or three offices there that I'd work between. I just walk out of the office and I wouldn't see you again. That's the way I did it. And if, and if, and if, and, 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 and an agent, uh, it was this, if it, if my, if the hours a day, if it did not make me $5,000 an hour, now I would look at it. If I was going to have to fly somewhere, I'd get my plane gassed up, bring it out there. I had it, they had it out of Addison Airport. And I would say, to top off the tanks, I had it again, and I had a, uh, a single engine, variable pitch, constant speed prop. I'd say, bring it out there on the front. And if, and, and if it wasn't going to make me 5000 an hour for that day, if I was going to be out there four hours, if it was going to make me $20,000, I wouldn't fly. I wouldn't go. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord's going to try you, every one of you here. He's going to try you in the unrighteous mammon. Every one of you. I don't know why I'm bumping my gums together like this tonight. He's going to try every one of you in the unrighteous mammon. You will never get anything in God until you have been proved in the unrighteous mammon. Until he can trust you in that which is another man's. And then how will he commit to your trust the true riches? If you steal from that man one dollar, you're going to lose. You're going to lose out with God. You, your, your conversation has to be impeccable. It has to have integrity. It has to be in God. You can't lie, cheat, steal. You can't steal a pencil from work and say, well, they don't pay me enough anyway. It's my pencil because they don't pay me enough anyhow. No, if they ain't paying you enough, go in there and say, listen, the squeaky, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Go in there and say, look, I know I'm good. You see that little boy the other night? Jeff Darnell came in from Houston, Texas. He was on the field for me for two years. And he come up there and he heard the same thing that I'm telling you tonight. And he has no formal education. He has nothing except, but he, but he said uh, uh, they, they wanted, wanted a hotel manager. He didn't have no hotel management experience. He doesn't have a bachelor's degree, nothing. He just walked in. They got everybody in the world answering that, $70,000 a year. You get a free uh, uh, a hotel. You get a free thing there with it and everything. He walked in. He said, you got experience? He said, I'm one out of ten. You got a chance to hire the best there is here. If you don't, it's your loss. And that man hired him, and that boy's been blessed. And he said, Brother Beard, all I did was just do whatever. They're. And the Lord led me, and the Lord did it all, every one of them. Now I had the Lord's call him to sell everything he's got out. And that's the reason he's down here, and that's the reason he's crying right now. Don't think it ain't, don't think it's easy. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I ain't selling out, but that's fine. You don't have nothing to do with it. I'm talking to somebody here that God's going to move in, and he's going to see what you'll do with the unrighteous mammon. It's going to be a different service tonight. I'm going to, I was going to go into the, the judgments of God, and I'm going to tell you something. Right here in America, you're going to see tanks on these streets out here, but you don't think so. You're going to go to Walmart, and those shelves are going to be empty, but you don't think so. Prophets right now prophesying, and, and, and the prophet, the true prophets of God, they ain't prophesying ble blessings and prosperity. They're prophesying, bless the Lord God, you hold on because for God's sake to turn this thing upside down. You know why? Because the United States of America has forgotten God. Oh, yeah, it has. The nation forgets God. God said, I'll turn it into hell. You say, well, it won't affect me none. Oh, you don't think it will? I'm going to show you. I'll tell you what you do. You turn to Ezekiel 21. Hallelujah unto God. Do what God tells you to do with the money. And there's coming a time when everybody in America, you mark it down, when there's no food on the shelf, but you don't believe it, that you will live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You will be Elijah by the book Kereth with a raven dropping you a morning dinner. Oh, I forgot you call it lunch. And another dinner, a steak dinner for supper. I mean dinner, I'm sorry. Lunch and dinner, not dinner and supper. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody said, I ain't never heard of no such. You're going to see it. You are going to see it. You sit there and you tell me it ain't, ain't so because of your bank account. You came so close to failing there in those bank accounts, they took the FDIC and the FSLIC and moved it up to 250000 so they would not insure 250000 of the banks because they didn't want you to take your money out of the bank because you're that close to going under. Oh, yeah. Oh, but you've got your business. Let me tell you something. 
the FDIC and the FSLIC are not federal deposits. They are not federally owned. They are not federally owned. The Federal Reserve Bank is not a federal agency. Look under Federal Express and you'll see the Federal Reserve. It is a corporation of a closely held corporation of the mega bankers. They're the ones that's ruling America. But you think, and you said, well, because it's on a, in God we trust on a dollar bill that everything's going to be great with us. You're going to be able to take that dollar bill and take a whole, whole wheelbarrow full of it up there and it won't even buy a loaf of bread. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God's laying a word down there to you that will make you, it'll exceed you, and it'll be while everybody else is starving, you'll be eating. But you've got to believe the word. And somebody said, well, it ain't going to happen in America. We're the great America, the United States of America. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. And the God, the reason God right now is overturning, overturning, overturning. Because we've forgotten God. You've got your Marilyn Murray O'Hares. You wanted to vote God out. You wanted to have God out. Used to when Abraham Lincoln when they went to school over there, they had one book. And that was the Bible. That was your reading, writing, and arithmetic. And that's the reason when they came out of school, they knew what the do. They had some word in them. They had some power in them. Now they don't even allow Bible in there. And if you go to school with one over there, you're liable to get yourself and your teacher kicked out. You don't think it's going to happen. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you tonight. What time is it? 15 minutes, we're out of here. Turn to Ezekiel. I'm going to give you straight scriptures for right on that. You pray to God and you see if it ain't so. Yes. Hallelujah. You see if it ain't so. Before God does anything, before he destroyed the, uh, the Jerusalem in 70 AD by Titus, uh, the son of Vespasian, uh, he warned his people to go to Pella. Go to Pella. Get out of Jerusalem because I'm going to destroy it. I'm here to tell you that God's going to destroy America. Oh, no, Brother Beard, this is a nation under God. No, it's not under God. He used to be under God, but it's not under God now. God is going to turn it back again. He's going to turn it back with weeping and girding of sackcloth and ashes. He's going to smite it over there, and the people one time again will cry out to God like they used to cry out before. Hallelujah unto God. You know why? Hallelujah. I'd rather preach a black church than a white church any day of the week. You know why? Because they know what it is to go through sorrow. They know what it is to travail. They know what it is to plow field all day long, and they're crying to God and understand what a cross is, but you've got a crossless Christianity. You don't know what a cross is, and God does not move without the cross. If any man come after me, let him deny himself. Go pick up his cross, not him, not Jesus' cross, your cross, and follow me, hallelujah, and lose your life for the gospel's sake. Then you will find it. I'd go to a black church, an old man of God, uh, Bishop E. Evans, from, from one uh, apostle of the Lord, uh, walked up to me and said, I know what you call this. <laughs> he said, that's reading it boots you out on every corner. He said, but I want you to come over here. He was stout, real stout. <laughs> Hallelujah unto God. Real, he, hmm, you just have to Bishop Johnson, one way, one way, one way to God and baptism in Jesus' name, one way. That's who he came up under. The word, the word before God does anything, before God does anything, he will show it to his servants, the prophets. And the prophets there is not an office of a prophet. You, God, God in Sunday times and average man respect to the fathers by the prophets hath in this last day spoken to us by his son, the word of God. That's how he's speaking. Hallelujah. And God said before that things happen, I show you things before they happen so that you may know that I am God. And beside me there is no God. I declare the former things before they happen. I know those things from the first to the last. Therefore you will know that I am God. Now I'm fixing to show you what God's going to do. You're a prophetess. 
You're a prophetess. Hallelujah. And you more than just a deacon. You can hide behind that all you want to, but I know. Some of you prophets are going to find out you're married to apostles and you just don't call them apostles. Well, I don't want to be in the forefront. I don't want to preach. God didn't say that. You just obey God. Let's see what God's going to do. I don't plan these services. I had one, I had a bunch of young men in Lufkin, Texas come over to me and all preachers. I said, Brother Bear, we'd like a copy of your sermons. We like that. We want a copy of your sermons. We can run them off. Just give them to us. We'll run a copy of them. We'll give them back to you. I said, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Somebody said, I wouldn't want a copy of your sermon if it was the last one on the face of this earth. Hallelujah. But do you know it's God or not? Do you feel the leading of the Holy Ghost? Do you hear the voice of the Lord God Almighty? Do you hear? And then hear we who obey. Hallelujah. Somebody said, now you're using a fear tactic. I ain't using a fear tactic on you. I'm just telling you the way it is. I'm saying get in now and while everybody else is starving, you'll be eating. You'll be eating a steak sandwich every day. But it won't be delivered by the mailman or USPS. It won't be delivered down at the local uh, uh, job site where you've been working. It'll be delivered by God himself. And he know what he'll do. He won't even use the, he won't even use uh, the, the uh, uh, regular turtle doves or the, or the uh, uh, chariots or something like that delivered to you. He'll use a raven. That's the first thing that came off the ark. But it couldn't find no rest. Turn back. It's only the dove that's going to bring you peace in the sky. The ark's going to rest upon the mountain of Ararat. But that dove, God's going to use that raven. He's going to feed you. He's going to make that wicked. Let me tell you something. When they were going to kill Jeremiah, they was going to, you prophesied against, you, somebody said, you're prophesying against the church, Brother Beard. I'm here to tell you well, I'll tell you what, we got 50, I got 10 minutes left. Bless the Lord God, let's get in the Word. You, you sitting there and, you, and you're thinking, well, you know, you out in left field now, honey. Right. Hallelujah. We just see how out in left field I am. Take a look at Deuteronomy 32. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I got an amen from somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see why you ran all the time? Everything your mom and daddy preached to, preached to you is totally different in the word. Hallelujah unto God. Say, when are they coming to this revival? Thank you. Good. Now, don't tell him I said that because he... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look! I'm just going to give you two or three scriptures. I'll tell you what to do. I'm just going to give you two or three scriptures. I ain't going to sit there and preach it all night. I'm just going to sit there and you, you pray about it when you go to the house. And then you see if I'm wet. See if I'm wet behind the ears. I had a Mexican come in one night and said, you knocking Mexicans? I said, no. I used to say, you ain't got a Chinaman's chance. A little slant eyed come up here and said, you got something against Chinese. My wife told me, said, you better quit saying you don't have a Chinaman's chance. So I shut that up. It's all Chinaman over in Houston, you know. Matter of fact, the streets, streets are in Chinese now. Hallelujah. Well, that's enough to say about that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at Deuteronomy 32. Now, 